What's up YouTube? Today I'm going to teach you how to get started with DaVinci Resolve. The reason why I'm doing that is because it's an amazing piece of software and it's free. It's free! And that means if you try it, still don't like it, it's okay because you didn't spend a dime on it. If you do though, you might be in for a treat because that's what I use. I started on Premiere Actually, I started on iMovie, but then I moved up to Premiere. And then when I first tried Resolve, I never looked back. And also, I'm on Twitch every Monday, every Friday from 7 to 10 British Standard Time. Without further ado, let's get to it. Alright, so let's jump right in. I'm gonna open up Resolve. And while that's happening, I'm going to navigate to the folder where I keep my footage. It's this one. Okay. Now, the first thing you're gonna see is this pop up where it's kind of like a splash screen, right? You have all of your projects. Obviously, you're not going to have any of this in there if it's the first time you're opening it. You're just going to have the entire project. There's a few things you can do here. You can make the thumbnails bigger and change the sorting. You can get a little bit more info about each project, like the resolution and the last time you worked on them. You can switch between thumbnail and list modes. And then if, you have, if you're on list modes, this is another way to change the sorting, right? I'll keep it that way. And then over here, there's a little search function, because if you have a lot of these projects and you're trying to find a specific one, that's a quick way to do it. And then you can either just keep this selected and hit open, or just double click it. And here we are. We are in the cut page right now, which we're not going to use for this tutorial, so I'm just going to skip over to edit. This is the screen that you're going to be staring at for most of your time working on, on Resolve. So on the left side, we have the media pool, which is going to host all of the media that you import into your project. Up here, we have the two preview screens. The one that's all black right now is my source preview. And the one on the right here is the timeline preview. And then obviously down here is the timeline. There's a little divider here. On top of it is going to be video and below it is going to be audio. It's quite similar to other editing softwares you might already be used to. So then I'm going to drag, drag this back in and get my footage in here. Now, that's the first thing. You might not get this, but I'm getting it because I have my timeline set to 24 frames per second. And I shot this on 24, which means I shouldn't be seeing this, but it's because I shot it on the GoPro and GoPros are kind of iffy with the, with the frame rate stuff. If you hit change, it'll convert the timeline frame rate to whatever is in the files that you're importing. I would most of the time advise against doing this because if you have sources from multiple different cameras or phones or different things, most likely they're going to have slightly different frame rates. And if you change it to this, then it'll be correct for some of them, but not all of them. You're better off hitting don't change and that will keep your timeline in the settings that you set which for me i always do it in the way that i'm gonna have the delivered video like when i finish the video i want this to be the resolution and this to be the frame rate so for this one i'm keeping it 1080p 24 frames per second and that's it i didn't change anything so the save button doesn't activate i just cancel out and off we go. Now, the easiest and quickest way to put anything in your timeline is to just select that. I, I clicked it once and now it's red around it. I press F9. Now it's in my timeline. See? Sometimes when you do this, it will be zoomed in like that. And then it's a little confusing, right? Because I can't see the entire length of the thing. 
To change that, you want to press Shift Z. And that is like a fit all command. Now I can see the start and the finish of everything. Right, so before we put anything in a timeline, sometimes maybe you recorded something and you want to not have the entire thing down there. <clears throat> and you want to kind of skim over this to see if you have specific sections that you really need. So let's say, let's, let's just play it. A potato is a great, great vegetable because it's so versatile, right? You can cook it, you can boil it, you can fry it. It goes well with meat, goes well with chicken, goes well with fish. You can put it in a soup. Right there. I'm going to stop right there. Let's say I only wanted this part of it. So because the cursor down here, which is the source timeline, the source preview timeline, this is where I stopped it, and I want this to be the end of the footage that I'm sending to the timeline. So I press O. See how, like, from that to the beginning, it's now a little lighter gray color? Now, I've selected only this piece of the footage to put into the timeline. And because that's still selected, I can press F9, and I only get that little portion of it. Okay, let's play it. A potato is a good... See, there's a long section there. A potato. Almost two seconds of useless footage. So you can mouse over this on the left here. There's a little white marker there. If I click it and drag it over, that makes a fade. So let's see how that looks. A potato is a great, great Quite nice. vegetable. But what if I want to mess with this fader, with this fade, right? Instead of just having a straight fade, I can drag it back. And then when I have my mouse cursor near the end of a segment, either in the beginning or the end, it'll change to a different icon, right? If I right click it, I can add whatever the default transition is, which I think by default when you first install it is going to be cross dissolve, which is one of the most useful ones. I never changed it, so. And then it will give you four different options to how long you want it to be. So let's say I want it to be 54 frames long. That's almost our two seconds. So let's look at that. A potato. See, now because there's no other footage under this or be or before cross dissolve in this situation is going to look exactly like a fade because it doesn't have another piece of footage to cross dissolve right so it's going to be just a fade let me undo that what if i just want to cut it down and i have this little icon i can left click and hold and just drag it all the way here and maybe i'll do a faster fade and let's see how that looks like. A potato is a great... That was quick, right? A little quick. A potato is a great... Depending on how you're going to use this, this is better, or maybe the other one's better. The problem, though, is that because I cut a piece of it, it's now no longer in the beginning of my timeline, right? I could just click and drag it back, but instead I'm going to do this in a smarter way. So let's go back. Wait. A potato. All right, we're back to that first step. If I change this mode here, which is trim edit mode. Now, if I do this, I will cut out that little part, but it still starts in the same place. See? And then I can just drop it over here, release the mouse button, and do the fade. Let's see. Potato is a... Ooh, that was a little too much. Now, with the fade still there, I'm going to drag this back a little bit. And... A potato is... 
still a little abrupt, so let's adjust that a little more. A potato. Is That's a, a little great... better. Now let's try removing one of the two great grates. Great, great vegetable because. And there's also a little pause between there. So. It's a great, great vegetable because. I think the second one is going to be easier to remove because it has silence before it. So now I'm going to really look at the audio waveform here. I know that this one and this one is where I'm saying great. So let's look. He's a great, great. Yes. And because great has a T at the end, I'm safe to cut it here because I think it'll, it'll work. So now we click on this tool, which is blade edit mode, or just hit B on your keyboard. Now, when I mouse over this, it changes into a little razor blade, see? And it will snap to where my timeline cursor is, which is the red bar. So I can go and click here. And now it changes a few things here to indicate that I have now cut the footage at that point. If I move this, you can see that they're now separate regions, right? If I don't want to go and click over, press B, click back here, a quicker way is to just, let me position this cursor again. It's a great, great... Right there. Maybe right there, yeah. If I just press Control B, I can cut it where the cursor is and it's much faster. Now let's try Trim Edit Mode. And I will dial down this. And let's play it back to see how that looks. A potato is a great vegetable because it's so... And there we go, we have a jump cut. Now, the one little trick that you can do... Great vegetable. To kind of avoid that little jump is to do a transition there that we call smooth cut. So then I'll open my effects library over here. And then we've got on the left here, video transitions. I'm going to look for a smooth cut, which is right here. And if you mouse over it and you move your mouse, it'll show a little preview of what it does to the footage. So like, you can tell how it kind of morphs, but because most of my frame, I'm only moving my mouth and my head a little bit, it'll morph and maybe we can use this as a trick to not see that there's been a jump cut in there. So I'm going to drag this over, place it over there. Now let's see what it does without me touching anything. Oh, he's a great vegetable because it's oh, close. But I could see a little bit of ghosting there. If you pay close attention, he's a great vegetable because there's a little on my on my eyebrow. You, you can especially see he's a great vegetable. Yeah. So then instead of doing it this way, I'm going to make it a little shorter. Let's see what that does. You know, he's a great vegetable because it's, oh, it's better, but not quite still. Even shorter. Let's see. He's a great vegetable because it's... Hmm. I'm still not happy with it. So let's look closer. Okay, I'm at max zoom. I'm going to try and even shorter. That's as short as it will go. I'll go back to C and everything. Let's see. Great vegetable because it's there. We go. If you really, if you're really looking for it, you can you can see it. But it's a great vegetable because it's so versatile. Almost right? imperceptible now. You can cook it. You can boil it. You can fry it. It goes well with. Now I took too long between right? these spaces. You can cook it. Sorry. Right. Let me try to shorten. That as well. Control B, trim at it, drag it back down. Versatile, right? You can cook it. Same thing. So now, because I've already added the smooth cut one time and I made it really short, I can switch back to selection mode or just press A on your keyboard. Click on this transition. I'm not sure how easy it is to see in the video, but it's now selected in red and 
to hit Control C. And then over here, I place the mouse on top of it until the cursor changes to that double brackets thing, which indicates that I'm right in between. Right click, paste. Let's see what that does. All right, you can cook it. Perfect. Look at that. Versatile, right? You can cook it. There you go. So that's smooth cuts. We've covered fade. Now let's do just the end of it. You can put it in a soup. Little fade at the end. Chicken goes well with fish. You can put it in a soup. And that's it. Obviously, this is not finished per se, but I think it's enough to, to get you started on, on resolve and doing cuts and where things are and getting audio. The last one thing that I do want to cover in this tutorial is adding some music. Same thing, we just drag it into our bin. And then I can just click this, drag it down. Boom. Now, another thing here is that we got a little silence in the beginning, right? So we already know how to do that. We can just trim. And then drag it back. Or, right, as we just discussed, change to trim edit mode. And just adjust. Oh, see, but that's dangerous, isn't it? Because it's trimming my video. Here's the solution to that. I lock this video. And also this audio, because I don't want to mess with that either. Now if I do this, it doesn't affect anything that's over there. So that's what we want. So I'm going to just drag it over here. And let's see. Potato is a great vegetable. It's so versatile, right? It's a little loud, right? So let's zoom out. I'm also going to cut this at the end there, just to avoid having to mess with this. Then Shift Z. And I'm going to already do the fade there. And with the audio, see this little dot here? If you drag it, you can have the fade be a little more aggressive or less aggressive as per your needs, which is pretty handy. I'm just going to leave it as it is. And then go back here. And now if I mouse over the top portion here of this audio track, you can see how it changes to a top and bottom arrow cursor. If I click and drag that, it'll give me how many dBs I'm altering. So I can just drag it down a bit, like minus eight. Now let's hear it. Potato is a great vegetable because it's so versatile. That's much better, right? You can cook it, you can boil it. Still too loud though. So I'm gonna take it down a bit more, minus 12. Let's see. Potato is a great vegetable because it's so versatile. I think that's okay. Right? You can cook it, you can boil it, you can fry it. It goes well with meat, goes well with chicken. The last little thing is like, okay, we're happy with this. How do I get a video, a finished video out of this, right? We're going to go to the deliver page. Let's click on that. And then on the bottom here, is our timeline and then over here are just different sections of it because i still have cuts right so each region is going to show up over here and then on the left here if you want to just not worry about any of these settings just click on youtube and then the little arrow up here will allow you to pick between 720p 1080p and 2160p which obviously is 4k since everything we've, we're doing is on 1080p, I'm not going to touch that. And then I'm going to name it Potato. And then you can tell it where to save it. I'm just going to put it in my usual folder, so save. And then just leave everything as is. 
add to render queue. Now it pops up on the right side here. And then you just click render all. And it'll go through. Boom! You have a video. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that was useful. You can now get started using DaVinci Resolve. I'm definitely going to be doing more of these. Maybe the next tutorial could be what you need. Just make sure to subscribe and like, which helps me a lot so I can keep doing these. Don't forget I'm on Twitch as well. I'm going to put the address down here and in the description of this video. And see you in the next one.